And we're back for more Cowboy Bebop analysis with Session 3, Honky Tonk Women. The title in question refers to a song from the Rolling Stones of the same name. Thematically, a honky tonk woman might mean a barroom dancer who might do sex work as a side hustle. While the connotation is aged poorly, we could at least make an argument that the woman will do whatever it takes to survive. Sex work is, after all, still work. With that in mind, an episode title like this fits entirely for the character of Faye Valentine. We begin with another side of the gates and a ship traveling through before we get to a busy nightlife scene. A shop owner is smoking only to see a woman in skimpy shorts, white boots, and oozing general sex appeal coming into his shop. Faye, the woman in question, puts together a submachine gun and offers the shop owner stellar advice on the first rule of combat. Shoot first. It doesn't go exactly as planned for Faye, but she was up against a gatling gun, so we can give her a break. We cut to being aboard a space station, or rather a casino. Faye is interrogated by the boss of the establishment, Gordon. Gordon talks about her being Poker Alice, which was likely an identity she used while she swindled the casino and forced him to send his goons after her. Faye gets frisked in handcuffs while Gordon pulls out an ace of hearts that Faye was hiding. The mention of the tale of Poker Alice still being told from here to Tijuana is meant for us to remember the new Tijuana from Session 1, because as far as we can tell, hardly anyone lives on Earth anymore. Plus, you know, world building. Let's talk about Poker Alice. Alice Ivers, better known as Poker Alice, is a legendary figure of the Old West. She was well known for being a talented gambler, earning her nickname after her first husband died and she had to support herself financially. She was known for smoking cigars while wearing fancy dresses at poker tables, carrying a gun on hand for anyone who got out of sorts with her, and never gambling on Sundays. While she was skilled both as a player and dealer, she didn't have the best runs of luck in other aspects of her life. All three husbands she met passed either by unfortunate accident or illness. Her attempts at bootlegging, being a brothel madam, and running a saloon all came crashing down. Poker Alice in the end was only talented in one thing. Poker. Bluffing, numbers, seeing through lies, and telling them better than your opponent. This actually isn't a bad figure to compare to Faye, but we'll come back to that. We come to an elevator on the same casino ship, where Jet proceeds to tell Spike about a dream he had about Charlie Parker quoting Goethe. Of course, Spike finds this unbelievable. Personally, I think this minor scene is meant to inform us on the series as a whole. Charlie Parker is a key figure in the history of jazz, and the sort of noir that one thinks in the face of jazz is wrapped around Cowboy Bebop as a whole. Goethe, on the other hand, is a likewise key literary figure of poetry and story. He's well known for Faust Parts 1 and 2, the Sorrows of Young Werther, and Philosophical Waxings. Interestingly, while The Sorrows of Young Werther was a work he despised in later life, the story is about unrequited love and a messy triangle that may require death to fix. Hmm. Well, in fairness, Goethe's part fiction, part biography story doesn't carry all the same themes, but there are a few beats to focus on. Back to the story, Spike acts like a smartass in front of the smoking sign, and the two enter the casino proper. Jet warns Spike against playing too much with his eyes being too sharp, whether that means one particular eye or just his talent in martial arts, who's to say? We see our three old guys from episode 1 doing some gambling, Antonio, Carlos, and Jobim. Spike shows just how good his eyes are and gives them a hand in winning, before taking a small tip. Because Spike... While Jet wins at the slots, Spike is walking around and stops in front of an old black-and-white samurai movie. Some believe this is a reference to Vicious being a swordsman, and that this is a hint that only a true samurai can kill Spike. Personally, I think this is a reference to Yusako Matsuda, who Watanabe has said was a major influence in Spike's creation. Matsuda starred in a range of movies and television, one of his earliest works being a historical samurai film, Ryoma and Sats or Assassination of Ryoma. Then again, this is Cowboy Bebop, so it could be interpreted as both, or neither. We cut to Faye, pulling a 21 as a dealer. Funny, she pulls the same ace of hearts she cheated with earlier. With her patrons groaning at the table. Spike takes a seat, and she confuses him for a man she's supposed to make a trade-off with, as Gordon informs us how this is all supposed to work. Apparently, all Faye needed to do was get Spike's last chip, and that would be that. They have an interesting back and forth before Spike leaves with the final chip and Faye gives chase. 
Spike bumps into the guy who was supposed to sit down at Faye's table, and the guy runs off, while Spike grabs the chip that was likely supposed to go in Faye's hands. Faye finds Spike and yells for the poker chip, while Spike snarks that she cheated the entire game, and he didn't even say a word. This is doubly hilarious because Spike uses his fast senses and artificial eye when he plays. The only reason he survived as long as he did compared to the other players at Faye's table is because he was cheating as well. Before Faye can get the chip, Spike swallows it because Spike. Faye runs off and Spike gets run upon by some security guards, who he proceeds to beat the crap out of. Faye says screw this and calls her ship as Jet sees Spike causing no end of trouble. Faye then blasts off, thinking she's escaped, only to find Jet and Spike hitched a ride on her ship. How they survived the vacuum of space? I'm still trying to work that out. Either way, we see the guy Faye confused Spike for, getting the crap kicked out of him with no chip in hand. Apparently, the chip could bring a whole lot of heat down the casino. Gordon says to put a bounty on Faye and has Spike's lookalike killed. There's the eye catch, and we're back anyway. Faye has been handcuffed in the Bebop's bathroom while Spike and Jet debate on how much they can get for her spaceship. In a bit of mistaken identity, Faye still thinks that Spike was the guy she meant to make the transaction with. Spike and Jet leave Faye inside the bathroom and figure things out. While Jet works out the chip, Spike sees how much of a bounty is hanging around Faye's neck. Faye gets a message to Gordon and I am left wondering how she has all these fancy gadgets for subterfuge a bracelet that summons her ship, and a pocket communicator. Once Faye realizes that there's a bounty on her and Spike and Jet intend to bring her to prison, she goes on a tirade about calling herself a Romani, but also referring to herself as a gypsy. The word gypsy is a tainted word primarily because it has been used as a racial slur to make certain connotations towards lawlessness and suspiciousness about Romani people. Similarly to the usage of the word negroid, lack of usage would make for better practice. In this context, one could subscribe to the idea that this, and calling Spike and Jet gauchos, trying to convince Jet to unlock a cuff, and howling very overdramatically, is all so Faye can make herself seem harmless. Harmless by seeming nonsensical, at least. Spike and Jet run into Gordon, quite literally, in fact. Gordon asks for the poker chip back, but Jet and Spike aren't buying into it. Apparently, ISSP had a security program to break into any security, but they lost the program, or rather the key to the program that breaks the security. Jet attempts to negotiate the chip for money, while Faye breaks free thanks to Jet letting one of her cuffs loose. Out in space, Spike proceeds to deliver the poker chip, while Faye eats all of Spike and Jet's food before getting chased by Ayn. Spike is about to make the deal, but he's seen this kind of standoff too many times. He kicks the gunman out into space, before Faye and Spike have a quasi-flirtatious back and forth. Personally, I think it's more like game recognize game. Faye gets out with the money and Spike hightails it as Gordon tries to light them up with missiles. Faye proves to be an ace pilot and Gordon dies. Spike marvels that Faye beat him again, before he and Jet find a new casino to make their fortune. Spike hears some guy losing all his money and sees Faye's ship flying off into the distance. He smiles to himself. Easy come, easy go. So looking back at this episode, I have to admit, I've never been the biggest fan of the idea that Spike and Faye have a sort of attraction to each other, but I do see where it all stems from. Personally, I subscribe to the idea, however, that Faye has more in common with Spike and comes off as a female reflection to him. A distaff counterpart, if you will. I will go more into character parallels at later episodes i.e. my funny valentine and speak like a child. For a moment, consider their similar behaviors of working on the fly and thinking steps ahead. Faye gets one of her hands loose in the bathroom, already figuring out how she'll escape. Likewise, Faye's talents for property destruction and getting into constant trouble are all hallmarks to Spike's behavior. While it can be assumed that Spike might find himself attracted to Faye and vice versa, I think a much simpler interpretation is him recognizing a lot of himself in her. Often in anime, the relationship between comrades is played up for all it's worth. Speaking of Faye, the comparisons to Poker Alice actually become more fitting in this episode. Consider Faye's character. She's far from harmless, excellent in subterfuge, lying, and everything that makes up the criminal underworld in Cowboy Bebop. 
She leans heavily into either her sexuality or presumptions of men, not unlike Poker Alice's choice of wearing gowns during her poker games and her attractive looks that often kept men's focus away from poker. Faye herself dresses and can even act provocatively, but also uses a flair for the overdramatic if necessary. Once we get a look into her past, we also learn that she is a wreck as far as her romantic history goes, not unlike Alice Ivers. Poker Alice, even invoked mockingly by Gordon, is actually a fair real-life figure to compare Faye to. That's all I have for now. I have no idea what I'm really doing, and we'll come back for session four, Gateway Shuffle. See you, Space Cowboy.